Language is complicated. It is vast and universal. It spans continents and cultures and hundreds of thousands of years and can be so varied that two identical sentiments can be incomprehensible to one another. The sum total of communicative history in the world that we know about is but a fraction of what has existed since the dawn of man. Our ability to discover the truth about our ancestry is contingent on first being able to understand these symbols and phonemes that may or may not be a far cry from the written and spoken language we know and use today. Understanding languages that are not our own requires first a bridge between worlds, something that can be small and seemingly insignificant, but that acts as a catalyst to eventual comprehension. For ancient languages no longer spoken and sparingly written down, these bridges are few and far between. Heaven's Vault, the most recent offering from 80 Days developer Inkel Studios, has this notion at heart. It's a game in which you spend the bulk of your time exploring abandoned ruins and deciphering written characters in order to discover the truth behind mythology. In a more abstract sense, however, this is a game about the ideological and moral conflict between the historical and the contemporary. At its heart, a script called Ancient a logographic language designed for the game that approximates a linguistic culture for the player to uncover. Deciphering the language of a long-lost civilization is not easy, however. There's no Rosetta Stone to help you along the way. There's no easy-to-figure-out alphabet to aid you in your translations. You have to do things the hard way, the academic way. As one might imagine, Heaven's Vault is heavily influenced by archaeology. Its lead character, Alia Lazra, is loosely based on real-life archaeologist Monica Hanna, a specialist in ancient Egyptian history. The game apes the discipline in a number of ways, not only through its processes, but also its frustrations. In particular, the cultural discord that comes with uniting a country's history, where the past is often treated as having no tangible bearing on the present. Hannah referred to this notion in contemporary life of the ancient and the modern being seen as two hermetically sealed entities with no continuity, and as part of her work with the Egyptian Heritage Task Force, she sought to bridge that gap through education and the salvaging of antiquities that were not so quietly being lost to destruction and degradation. This intellectual and emotional wall between the past and the present is a core feature of the game's thematic structure, providing context for why its lost script and forgotten history are so widespread, as well as understanding an uncomfortable truth about the reality of diving into the past. An archaeologist is a kind of detective, writer John Ingold said in an interview with Rock Paper Shotgun. The joke is that they're a detective that's very late, Unlike a detective game where at the end the murderer stands up and says, you're right, it's a fair cop, I did do it, an archaeologist can never know. All you ever have is the best theory that you've got. There are no right answers in Heaven's Vault. It's a process of elimination where a certain translation is not automatically the right one, but always a possibility until the moment it either is validated by your other work or it no longer makes sense in context. It's not about getting things right, but rather about Aaliyah's confidence in her translation. You take the symbols you are certain you know the meanings of, and you use that assurance and the context of your surroundings to infer further meaning from the text you find in the field. You can corroborate your translations with other academics and validate your understanding by using it to seek out further discovery, but there is a very real sense that you are largely firing shots into the dark, you don't know anything. At best, your work is an educated guess, and the game treats ancient with reverence rather than contempt. It's not something to beat. It isn't a puzzle to assert dominion over, but rather a wild animal whose behavior we can seldom understand, from which comprehension is only possible thanks to our ability to chip away at fragments, while the beast as a whole remains largely unbreakable. And this is how you translate ancient bit by bit, logogram by logogram. Phrases and clusters of symbols flit together like a flock of birds only to be scattered by a linguistic anomaly. Confidence becomes truth as you progress, but there are far too many symbols, words and meanings in the nebula to be able to realistically translate everything you come across. It's a brilliant system for a puzzle game because it negates the ability to cheat the system by looking up solutions in a guide. 
but in turn it also works because it offers the player not an accurate representation of decipherment, the real deal is way more complicated and time consuming, but rather an engaging approximation that allows the player to immerse themselves in their role, something Ingold jokingly refers to as the guitar hero of linguistics. It's been designed that way for a purpose. Ingle as a studio is always committed to the idea that a game should never hold you back, that there should always be a path forwards, even if it's not necessarily the one you want. We love the idea that all of the translations are a kind of correct answer to what can happen next in the story, even if there is one literally correct translation, coder and artist Joseph Humphrey explained in an interview with Gama Sutra. They all feed back into the story, and that just means the game's pace is preserved. It's always your story. It's always moving on and you don't have this frustrating period of having to wait until the computer says yes before you can continue. It is true that Heaven's Vault has few tangible roadblocks throughout its story. There are really only two main goals. Find out what happened to your colleague and discover the truth behind the titular vault. And how you get to these realizations is surprisingly open-ended. You hop aboard your ship, the Nightingale, sailing on the currents of the nebula in search of the past, using information you've gathered via the translating of artifacts. You find a dig site or an abandoned ruin and you're left to explore to seek out evidence and add to an ever-growing understanding of a millennia-old empire that may or may not be the key to saving the nebula. The thing is, it's not very often that there is a tangible goal in sight when exploring these locations. Very rarely will you find one solid piece of evidence you need to collect to tick a box and move forward in the story. All you can do is explore, translate, and hope you stumble upon something that leads you closer to your ultimate goal. After a few examinations and extrapolations, you might be prompted by your nervous robot companion to return to your ship, but you don't have to. And that not yet prompt ends up offering a sort of Pavlovian response because on occasion, sticking around for a bit longer can lead to even bigger surprises. Early on in the game, I was offered the suggestion of leaving a ruins mere moments before discovering a crashed ship that would become a huge leap forward in my investigation. It was that silent passenger in my head that convinced me to turn back, reminding me that I'd missed a staircase, and the result was what realistically would have been a vital piece of evidence in any other detective game. And its belated discovery begs the question, how many more revelations have I passed by? It's not just the core investigation for which this matters. What Heaven's Vault does with this balance between challenge and pace inadvertently creates an interesting narrative layer over every inanimate object in the game. One layer deals with Aaliyah's pressing goal, for which her academic pursuit is all in aid of, but there's this second layer concerning the player's guiding hands becoming this unconscious voice inside Aaliyah that says there's more to discover here. This enormous spiralling web of information that stretches across every landscape turns even the most mundane rock into an inviting hub of discovery. What really excites me about this game is that at its conclusion, after hours of exploration, translation and what I understood to be quite a thorough investigation of the world and its history, I left the game with so many more questions than I started with. And I think this is why its core gameplay meshes so well with its setting. It ends up not really even being about decipherment, but rather the wider environment of archaeology and the relationship between evidence and abstraction. This is the true treasure of Heaven's Vault. It's ambiguity. It encourages exploration in a way that simple box ticking could not. It uses its incomplete narrative to engender curiosity, leading the player softly by hand, pointing out to them the tools for progress, but not how to use them. Its world has a history buried below its history, creating layer upon layer of narrative sediment that gets more vague and lost the deeper you dive. Above all else, it recognises that in pursuit of the truth, no object is too small to be valuable and that because no one thing is the key, everything matters equally. It's up to the player to decide how much of the truth they really need or want, encouraging investment without really ever requiring it. Because the truth in Heaven's Vault 
the big reveal is just a fragment of a moment long past, buried in time, the full picture forever lost while the bigger picture remains barely in frame. And maybe after the journey and the struggle and finally reaching the end destination, the true treasure of Heaven's Vault is what we discovered about ourselves along the way 